The Strategic Air Command and Aerospace Museum, its primary mission is to preserve the history of the Strategic Air Command and its legacy, and to preserve the aircraft and the artifacts that are part of the collection here. When a visitor enters the Strategic Air Command and Aerospace Museum, they are immediately met with the SR-71, an aircraft who today its top speed is still classified. It is enigmatic as an artifact and what it represents as far as the development of surveillance technology, which is really what the SR-71 is. Developed in the 50s, deployed in the 60s, that is one of the most popular artifacts that we have in the museum. We have some of the most unique opportunities here. For example, the B-36 is one of four that are left in the country. Sitting right next to it is the uh, XF-85, which is one of two that are in existence. We have aircraft that can't otherwise be seen. Our RB-45C is the only one left in the entire world. And so people look at these objects and relate them to American history, and American military history, and heritage, and what they represent. I think that some of the more popular exhibits that we have and artifacts are related to Nebraska's own astronaut, Clay Anderson. So Clayton Anderson has been generous and donated a number of materials to the museum and has given us a really close relationship with NASA. The high pressure exhibit focuses on the Korean War and aviation in the Korean War. Uh, where we highlight uh, not just the timeline, but also some of the pop culture of the period and the role aviation played throughout the war. That is a story that needs to be told. Uh, where it fits uh, in the role of aviation, you're making the jump from radial propeller-driven aircraft to jet engines, to fighters and bombers, uh, but also in the bigger world, I guess, of the Cold War. Cold War accelerated technology and learning and the development of, frankly, new weapons and weapon systems and surveillance systems. So whether it's a missile system or whether it's a satellite system, these were all rapidly growing technologies during the Cold War period that have set us up for who we are and what we are today relative to our global impact. For people who are coming out to the museum, what we're hoping they get from this exhibit is a better understanding of the Korean War, how it played out, but also the individual stories. Because as, as we document the evolution of aviation, the evolution of warfare, the evolution of the Cold War, what is always within all of us are the personal stories. Because all of this is very personal. It's about individuals. The education department has grown over the years. We served 32,250 student contacts in the community. A lot of our contacts are done through the Omaha Public Schools, the largest district in the state of Nebraska with over 50,000 students. Our science, technology, engineering, and math programs do include robotics. We have several activities directly related to robotics. Modular robotics with a product called Cubelets, where we take a number of blocks and put them together to create differently functioning instruments. We're teaching kids how to think modularly about how to engage and build the world of the future. We believe that the primary takeaway, the primary educational opportunity that we have at the Strategic Air Command and Aerospace Museum is to teach American military history. That is the first thing we do. The second is the history of Strategic Air Command, what it represented during the 20th century and going forward, what the legacy and history of that is. 